<laughs> Mr. Trump, you're right. Look back there in the press box. Heads are spinning. Media heads are spinning. This is going to be so much fun. Yeah. Are you ready to make America great again? Yeah. We all have a part in this. We all have a responsibility. Looking around at all of you, you hard-working Iowa families, you farm families, and teachers, and teamsters, and cocks, you rock and rollers, and holy rollers. All of you who work so hard, you full-time moms, you with the hands that rock the cradle, you are going to get so clobbered in the press. You are just going to get beat up and chewed up and spit out. And, you know, I'm thinking, you know, like you guys haven't tried to do that every day since that night in 08 when I was on stage nominated for VP and I got to say, yeah, I'll go send me, you betcha. I'll serve, and like you all, I'm still standing. So those of us who've kind of gone through the ringer as Mr. Trump has, makes me respect you even more, that you're here and you're putting your efforts and you're putting reputations, you are putting relationships on the line to do the right thing for this country because you are ready to make America great again. Well, I am here because I'm in it to win it. And we love our freedom. And if you love your freedom, thank a vet. Thank a vet and know that the United States military deserves a commander in chief who loves our country passionately and will never apologize. A new commander in chief, a weak need capitulator in chief that America will lead from behind. And he who would negotiate deals, uh, kind of like with the skills of a community organizer, maybe organizing a neighborhood tea. Yeah, well, he is from the private sector, not a politician. Can I get a hallelujah? Hallelujah! <laughs> In order to prioritize, to keep the main thing the main thing, and he knows the main thing. He knows the main thing. And he knows how to lead the charge. He, better than anyone, isn't he known for being able to command fire? <laughs> Are you ready for a commander in chief? You ready for a commander in chief who will let our warriors do their job and go kick ISIS ass? ready to stump for Trump? I'm here to support the next president of the United States, Donald Trump. Trump's candidacy, it has exposed not just that tragic, the ramifications of that betrayal of a transformation of our country, but too, he has exposed the complicity on both sides of the aisle that has enabled it, okay? Well, Trump, he's going rogue left and right, man. That's why he's doing so well. He's been able to tear the veil off the system, the way that the system really works. And please hear me on this. I want you guys to understand more and more how the system, the establishment works and has gotten us into the troubles that we are in in America. The permanent political class has been doing the bidding of their campaign donor class. And that's why you see that the borders are kept open for them, for their cheap labor that they want to come in. That's why they've been bloating budgets. It's for crony capitalists to be able to suck off of them. They are so busted the way that this thing works. They won't be able to be slurping off the gravy train that's been feeding them all these years. They don't want that to end. Well, and then funny, ha ha, not funny. But now what they're doing is wailing, well, Trump and his, uh, uh, his trumpeters, oh my goodness gracious, what the heck would the establishment know about conservatism? And turning safety nets into hammocks. And no, if they're not willing to do that, then how are they to tell us that we're not conservative enough? 
Give me a break. Who are they to say that? Right wing and bitter clinging proud clingers of our guns, our God, our, and our religions and our constitution. Tell us that we're not red enough. Yeah, coming from the establishment, right. They've been wearing a, this um, political correctness kind of like a suicide vest. Power through strength. Well, then, we're talking about our very existence. So, no, we're not going to chill. In fact, it's time to drill, baby, drill down and hold these folks accountable. It can't be salvaged. It, it must be savaged. All of us in the private sector, fighters in the House and the Senate, you only go to war if you're determined to win the war. And you quit footing the bill for these nations who are oil rich, we're paying for some of their skirmishes that have been going on for centuries where they're fighting each other and yelling Allah Akbar, calling jihad on each other's heads forever and ever. Like I've said before, let them duke it out and let Allah sort it out. Yeah, our leader is a little bit different. He's, he's a multi-billionaire. Not that there's anything wrong with that. It's amazing. He is not elitist at all. I, oh, I just hope you all get to know him more and more as a person and a family man. And, and he's not an elitist. And yes, as a multi-billionaire, we still root him on because he roots us on. He builds big things, things that touch the sky, big infrastructure that puts other people to work. The self-made success of his, he, you know that he doesn't get his power, his high, off of opium. Yeah.